Today we shall talk about Wood's lamp examination, which is a very important bedside examination frequently practiced in dermatology. It was introduced first by Robert W. Wood. He was the person who started uh, Wood's lamp uh, examination. It is a mercury vapor lamp that emits long UV radiation, which is generated by high pressure mercury arc fitted with the Wood's filter. So we have this Wood's filter inside this device, which will help in emitting a certain wa wavelength of light, which will help in detecting certain lesions of skin. And this Wood's filter is made up of barium silicate and 9% nickel oxide. This is the composition of the Wood's filter here. Okay. Absorption, there's absorption of one wavelength and emission of another longer wavelength, which tell, which gives us the fluorescence. So here is the Wood's lamp device. Here you can see the device. The device looks like this is, uh, there's this handle to hold it. And then the, to see it like this, we have, um, we have the eyepiece. Through this, we can see it. The lesions have to be examined in dark rooms. But there's, if there's no availability of dark rooms, then we can use this dark cloth or black cloth uh, to cover the lesion and see it. So, a completely dark room is required for examination. Examiner also should get adapted to the dark light before he examines. The lamp also should warm up for one minute before examining. Light source should be four to five inches away from the lesion. So, you have to hold the wood lamp uh, at least four to five centimeters away from the lesion for, for, for it to be seen properly. Uh, remove any material which is interfering with the fluorescence like any fiber or soap residues if it is there or topical medicines. So, if the patient has applied any topic, topical medicines if there's any clothing on that everything has to be removed and then you have to examine it so applications in dermatology here we use it in certain conditions so firstly we use it in tinea capitis tinea capitis is fungal infection superficial fungal infection of the scalp right and tinea capitis most commonly is seen in children but adults also can have if they're immunocompromised so it's a dermatophytic infection here we see blue green fluorescence so the, the color here that we see is blue green fluorescence fluorescence which is seen here and uh, this fluorescence is seen because of the pigment pteridine so the fungus uh, produces the pigment called as pteridine and because of this pteridine pigment we can see the fluorescence so all of these pigmentation only produces the fluorescence that's why we use wood slam uh, to examine those lesions okay and um, uh, it is only seen in tina capitis but it is not seen in corporis acrurus because this pigmentation is not produced again uh, fungi with the dermatophyte which causes tina capitis and tinea corporis crudus are different. So therefore, this fungi will produce pteridin and that's why you can see the florist. Next disease is pityriasis versicolor. It's again a superficial uh, fungal infection which is caused by malassezia. Okay? And uh, here we see yellowish white fluorescence. So the fluorescence here we see is yellowish white in color. And here again the pigment is it is because of Pityria lactone. In Pityriasis versicolor, we see both hyperpigmented and hyperpigmented macules we see, which are slightly scaly macules, mostly present, present on the sebaceous areas, uh, that is the face, um, the neck and the upper chest, upper back. In these areas, it will be present. Hypo and hyperpigmented the macules would be present. They are usually asymptomatic and sometimes they can be associated with uh, pruritus, can be very rarely seen. And that is Pityriasis versicolor. And uh, here we see yellowish white fluorescence and that is because of Pityria lactone. Next is Pseudomonas. In Pseudomonas infections also we can see uh, fluorescence. Pseudomonas can cause Pseudomonas folliculitis, uh, hot tub folliculitis or it can cause ecthyma. So in these uh, or it can also cause green nail syndrome. The, these are the dermatological manifestations of Pseudomonas. To repeat again, Pseudomonas can cause Pseudomonas folliculitis, it can cause um, hot tub folliculitis or uh, also called a swimming pool folliculitis or it can cause ecthyma. Both ectima and ectima gangrenosum can be caused by that. Here we see green color fluorescence. In Pseudomonas infection, we see green color fluorescence. Right? The next disease is erythrasma. Erythrasma is a bacterial infection caused by Cornibacterium minutissimum. And uh, here we see coral red, uh, coral pink fluorescence. It can be sometimes red also. And here it is due to the pigment coproporphyrin. Cornibacterium minutissimum. Right? This is the organism which causes erythrasma. Hypo and depigmented disorders, even hypo and depigmented disorders can cause, there can be a pigment uh, difference that you can identify. That's why it is used in hypo and depigmented disorders of skin also. Here we have vitiligo, 
ट्यूबरस क्लिरोसिस नीवस डीपिगमेंटोसिस नीवस अनिमिकस एंड केमिकल यूकोडमा सो विटिलिगो इज अ डीपिगमेंटिंग स्किन डिसऑर्डर दिस डिफरेंस बिटवीन हाइपो पिगमेंटेशन एंड डी पिगमेंटेशन आई टोल्ड यू बिफोर ऑल्सो हाइपो पिगमेंटेशन इज वेर इन द पिगमेंटेशन इज स्लाइटली रेड्यूस्ड दैन द नॉर्मल स्किन कलर वेर एज डी पिगमेंटेशन इट इज फुली रेड्यूस्ड लाइक योर इट विल बी इन डी पिगमेंटेशन विल बी मिल्की वाइट ऑलमोस्ट but here it will be just lesser than the surrounding skin uh, pigmentation be present and deep pigmented is characteristically seen in a condition called as vitiligo okay so here it is because of uh, destruction of the melanocytes in vitiligo there is deep pigmentation because of the destruction of the melanocytes so if these melanocytes are destroyed if there is disappearance and destruction of these melanocytes in the skin they give rise to a condition called as vitiligo wherein you see deep pigmented macules that is there will be flat lesions which are deep pigmented they would have completely lost their pigmentation so milky white patches you see in vitiligo that's a condition which you can identify it can be appreciated better in ut's lamp right next we have tuberous sclerosis tuberous sclerosis is again a genodermatosis here it's a genetic disorder okay here uh, the patient uh, can have so many manifestations are there here uh, he can have neurofibromas he can have conan's tumors adenoma sebaceum or shagreen patch there are many things or even kefeole macules so all of this can be identified uh, especially these pigmentary changes like kefeole macules can be appreciated and identified by uh, ultrasound examination then we have nevus depigmentosus as i have told you before again uh, uh, nevus need not always be hyperpigmented or blackish in color it can be depigmented also so and one such example is nevus depigmentosus and here also you can appreciate the lesion better nevus anemicus the difference between nevus pigmentosus anemicus is in nevus anemicus there will be hypopigmented because of um, vasoconstriction of the vessels which is caused by catecholamine release that is nevus anemicus right here it is because of nevus depigmentosus is melanocyte whereas here um, vasoconstriction of vessels causes uh, hypopigmentation is nevus anemicus that can also be appreciated in chemical leukoderma again leukoderma means whitening of the skin chemical leukoderma means chemical induced whitening so here it can be for example because of indian women use bindi on the forehead right they uh, wear bindi on the forehead and bindi will have para tertiary butyl phenol and because of this para tertiary butyl phenol uh, the chemical release causes hypopigmentation there so the, that is chemical leukoderma which again can be appreciated so pigmentary disorders also can be appreciated in wood's lamp next not only hypopigmented even hyperpigmentary disorders can be appreciated here we have freckles which are the hyperpigmented uh, spots which are present on the face and sun exposed areas we have nevus abortus which is a kind of nevi then we have melasma chemical peel usage so all of this also can be appreciated it we have a metabolic disorder called as porphyria uh, wherein porphyrin levels are increased and that also can cause uh, red or pink colored fluorescence under wood's lamp uh, urine and uh, blood also can be examined here uh, then we have acne vulgaris a common condition that most of us have faced so this acne vulgaris also can cause fluorescence of orange reddish colored fluorescence it can cause and that is uh, seen only over the comedones because of coprophorins or uh, even um, the parasitic infection that is arthropod infection scabies so these burrows are present in the web spaces uh, and in the wrist and in the groin area uh, wherever it's infected they will be present so th- that also can be appreciated by uh, wood lamp even drug deposits can be noted drug deposits especially a tetracycline deposits causes yellowish color tetracycline can deposit in the teeth which can cause yellowish discoloration next we have chrome hydrosis or uh, because of the lipofuscins present here it can be appreciated better so, uh, different colored sweat is seen that is lipofuscins which are released in the sweat and that can be appreciated better in ut's lamp examination next we have uh, squamous cell carcinoma even squamous cell carcinoma of the skin can give red colored fluorescence that is seen in ut's lamp examination next we have photodynamic diagnosis of premalignant and malignant conditions of skin that can be uh, done by applying uh, amino levulinic acid to the tumor for, for four to six hours under occlusion you apply this uh, topical amino levulinic acid to the tumor and then observe it on the wood lamp after four to six hours you can appreciate it better here you can see a case of tinea capitis with blue green fluorescence and this is petrius is versica you can see there's multiple hypopigmented macules here here we see pale yellow fluorescence This is a case of erythrasma which shows coral pink or coral red fluorescence here in the intratigenous areas you can see the fluorescence present 
here you can appreciate the depigmentation better it's a case of vitiligo so you can see a depigmented patch on the back but uh, on the front of the chest whereas but but you can appreciate the depigmentation better when wood's lamp is thrown and here is a case of porphyria wherein you can see the red pink color of the urine which is turned in that color because of the copper porphyrins present in the urine here this is the erythrasma here when you see coral pink uh, fluorescence you see here erythrasma this is erythrasma right advantages of woods lamp is it is a simple investigation it is non-invasive and it is it does not cost anything it's a cost effective investigation and portable tool you can uh, take it around right and various diagnoses can be confirmed by using woods lamp examination so since it's a very advantageous uh, investigation it is very frequently practiced disadvantages is uh, most of the fungi of tinea capitis do not show fluorescence so you sometimes uh, when you do in a case of tinea capitis if you don't find fluorescence it does not rule out that the patient does not have tinea capitis even still if the fluorescence is not present even then the patient can have tinea capitis right and reflection of light from any scaly dermatosis can be confused with p vasicular optical brightness are there and uh, erythrasma while examining that if the patient has washed and come to you you cannot appreciate the fluorescence then so it's important to consider all these factors before uh, examining the patient with Oats lamp.